All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the city of Blackwater. I am stoked for today's episode. I'm feeling good, looking good, smelling good. You're just going to take my word on that one. Caffeine has hit its peak, <laughs> so, you know, temporary happiness for the next little hour, I guess. So, looking forward to it. Now, jokes aside, I am actually really looking forward to today's episode because in the previous one, we've just developed out this medium-slash-high-density district of Fairview, and it's supporting commercial district of Sunset Valley. But now we get to really boost the population, throw in a few kind of cool public transport buildings that really, I guess, is what the game is all about. Like developing tram systems, subway systems, railway, that kind of thing. So I feel like basically this was like the starter part of our high density. And as you can see, it's very carbon copy. And it's a lot of the same buildings being repeated over and over. We're going to disrupt all that and try to make something great out of it. Now, really quickly, a bit of a recap, as you can tell. Long shadows are being cast across Blackwater. That's because, of course, it's 10.40 a.m. on a November morning. So it's 7 degrees, and uh, we can only expect it to get colder from here on out, which is going to affect the economy ever so slightly. Slightly increased energy demands, that kind of thing, but we should be fine. Now, we're at 27,600 population. If we have a look at the metrics for Fairview, we can see we have 5,814 residents with room for about 30 extra households, so a few more people are gonna move in. Now, we had left these empty pockets here purposefully so that we could have these high-density houses pop up, these skyscrapers or high-rises. But I think that would be a bit of a mistake doing it that way. So what I'm gonna do is just fill this back in with medium density, but don't worry. We're not going to have all of this. Like I said, we're going to break it all up and have it be a bit more interesting and dynamic and create a nice skyline, uh, as that's what the game is literally all about. So the way I'm going to do that is I've actually opened up a guide. I'm going to link it in the description. It's a great guide. It's on Steam. Can't remember who it's by. It's a massive, massive guide, so I'd have to scroll way up to check right now. But basically, be in the description anyway. Um, it kind of tells me all of the different zoning types and, how, and sizes, more importantly, for what we're going to be dealing with. So I'd said in the previous episode that I didn't want to go in and create like individual buildings and stuff. And I've sort of changed my mind on that slightly, right? So at the moment, if I just back up for a second, we can see that there is no demand for high density. And that's because there's unoccupied buildings. Everyone's choosing to move into the medium density first. It makes sense. They're generally bigger apartments and things like that before they're crammed like sardines into high rises and probably more expensive buildings, I guess. Um, well, I suppose it depends on the building. But yeah, they're not low rent. So either way, they're probably going to be somewhat costly. So once these guys are all filled, filled up, then the demand will creep back up. And then I'm going to go in and start zoning individual blocks here a bit more meticulously, like I said, by using the guide that's now told me, hey, there's such a thing as a two by two high density building. There's also a two by six and a so on and so forth. But there are certain combinations that don't exist. There's no four by five. Right. So if you want to do that, you're only going to fill a four by four. So just knowing that kind of thing, I think will allow me to plan a little bit better. Now, I actually don't know what the buildings look like. There are video guides as well accompanying this that show you like, OK, this is what this looks like. This is what this looks like and so on and so forth. I'm just more curious and wanted to know specifically which ones are viable buildings in the game to use. You know, what actually will generate a building when you give it that zoning. And then I can plan around that and put kind of pathways in behind them and stuff like that when I now know what's going to be used and what won't. So long story short, we're going to let this all fill up. Won't take too long. There's big demand in the city and there's lots of jobs going around. Going to let it all fill up. As we're doing that, we're going to add trams into the city and then try to fix this little road issue that we have down here. Um, so yeah, we'll just let time play and get started with that now that we've changed that zoning over. So real quickly, I'm going to turn off the day and night cycle because of what I'm going to be dealing with here on the roads. It'll just be casting too many shadows and we'll try to turn it on and off every time we want to get a nice more picturesque view of the city and so on. Okay, so what we have here is a really odd roundabout. Uh, basically, it's just a roundabout and every side of that roundabout we have the exact same road type. A seven lane asymmetric road leading in. It's a large road, and it's a seven lane. The thing that's weird about that is you'll notice here, it says you can turn left twice. So this lane and this lane. Whereas here, you've only got one left-hand choice. And that's actually what's causing all the backup right now. Because everyone's just trying to get into that left lane, because it's the only way into the city. Now, there'll be other ways in in the future. Plus, we're going to be adding rail. 
subway, metro, hopefully the demand for cars and stuff won't be as big. Now, another reason they're all piling in right now at 11 a.m. in the morning is because houses are appearing and people are still moving in constantly. So the influx of new people coming in means they're all coming in from the highway, just moving in for the very first time. So it's not going to be that bad in the future. Plus, with public transport, it'll be eased. But we still want to be able to provide them a decent solution for getting in here. Now, I've played around with these roads many times. I've also played around with it doing it at 90-degree angles just to see. And it actually seems to be somewhat random how many left turns we get. Kind of. Um, so I played around for quite a bit. Can't really seem to work it out. If you have ideas, go for it But in the comments. But I'm not too sure. But one idea that popped up frequently, and I think I even mentioned it, was building a slip road. right? A road that just takes you, bypasses the roundabout, and gives people another option for getting in straight away. So let's do that. Um, so let's get started with that. So what we're going to do and start off with is just using a... I might actually make it a two-lane slipway. Let's do that. We'll go with the two-lane. Use our curve tool. Don't have existing geometry on. Zoning cell length, sure. 90 degrees, no. Sides of building, no. Right, the rest is fine. So now we can kind of choose which lane we snap onto. So we'll start... Mm, one, two, three. Yeah, let's start somewhere like here on the far out lane. And we'll go all the way to be in line, guideline wise, with the bus lane. And as long as we're at 180 degrees or 90 degrees, that's fine. And then we'll just curl it up and we'll try to match the length, I guess. Either way, so it's 94 is the length. So we're at 80, 88, 96. It's as good as we're going to get it if we're snapping to zoning. So that's, and that's fine. We don't really need zoning actually thinking about it based on the size of this, uh, the curvature, but it should be fine. All right, so that's what we're given. A little slipway. Um, so what we're going to do with that now is start to clean it up, right? So we're going to get rid of the traffic lights on either side. So no traffic lights are needed around here. We do not need crosswalks on these parts. Yep, so that's gone. We do not need right-hand turns. So no one's turning right from here, but just to make sure. Sometimes they do that anyway. Just click that. Here, don't turn right. So that's fine. Yeah, so this is actually exactly what I wanted. It might look a bit strange, but this is what I wanted, I promise. Uh, which is one lane, then allowing people to choose if they want to go into the one on the right or the one on the left. So they'll merge. this left lane will stay and continue on to the bus lane, and this inner lane will then be a kind of a give way to merge into that. I think that's how it's going to work. Now, we're going to be putting tram lines straight down the middle of this, so it's going to actually change anyway soon enough. Um, but this might ease things for a little bit as people are coming in. Let's clean up the roads with some wide sidewalks just to prevent people parking on the edges. All right, and just clean it up a bit so we can get rid of some of the visual noise of cars just for a bit. So that's what we've got now. All right, so we need to clean this up and that can be easily done. This no longer needs to be a seven lane asymmetric in theory. We could just make continue the divided six lane road all the way up here and here. Then we'll widen the sidewalk in the center, the division. Now we still have a left-hand turn here, but there's nothing I can do about that. It's a roundabout. So if I said no left-hand turn, click, doesn't do anything because it's a roundabout. So they'll just always have the option. It'd be great. Maybe with mods or something in the future, you can get rid of that. But although that would be weird, I don't think actually thinking about it, I've ever seen a roundabout that says you're just not allowed to take this turn. I mean, there's, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. You can always point to examples if you if you think you've seen them. I'm, I've definitely seen things where it's no entry, but it's not like cars roll out that way. I don't know. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Um, right, so I'm pretty happy with all that. Whoa, autosave. Sorry about that. Pretty happy with all that. We'll see how that shakes out. Now, what we need to do next is I want some extra parking. Parking is a real problem. Checking things from the previous episode and letting time for a little bit while I was building out the extra roads here, I noticed that tons of cars were using this area for parking. So I'm going to put on a parking fee of the bus station, whack it all the way up. We're going to take our overground car park here, bring it all the way up. Basically, it seems like people drive no matter what you do and how many buses you run, trams, subways, and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, admittedly, I'm a bit early in the game to be saying all that, but it seems like to get people to not drive, we need to price them out of it, basically. So that's what we're going to do. So the roadside parking fee is also just going to be mental. Sorry, that's just the way it is. And we're going to provide two new car parks down here. I want people taking the bus or walking where they can. All right, so two extra ones here. Now, if you're going to add two car parks next to each other, it's going to create a lot of demand for people trying to get in there. Uh, so, in order to compensate for that, we'll take a three-lane one-way road upgrade. 
snap and continue all the way down to there. And that creates something even weirder. Right, so that's totally fine. You know, it's a three-lane road. The idea being that that's a lane reserved almost for coming in and coming out of the car park. Great. Uh, both of them. But what's weird here, you'll notice, is lane one and two for going straight, lane three for turning right or straight. Fair enough. Whatever. This one. How unusual. Lane one and two is for left hand only. And lane three is for straight or right. How weird is that? I think that's really weird. Just because of this. You would assume the left hand lane is for turning left, the middle lane for straight, the right lane for right. Why it's divided it up that way, I have no idea. Now, for context, this is a straight um, road. Uh, sorry, a, what's the word? A one way road, a two lane one way road. So, again, I would say that like the people turning right here go into the lane on the right. The people going straight here go into the lane left. The people on the left lane go into the lane on the left as well. I just don't know why it would be divided up that way. It just seems really, really weird. But what do I know? Right, so next thing then, I'm actually going to let these guys turn right. I didn't initially. But now we're going to let them have a way out and give them traffic lights. So hopefully that can actually take some pressure off the roundabout with intermittent brakes. But it might back up the highway. We'll see how it plays out if a lot of people are using this to get out or not. Uh, I don't think they will, but we'll see. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just see how that all goes. Uh, before we let time play, actually, just last thing, I just want to improve the... Let's get rid of all the cars parking on the edges here. It's a bit mental. All right. And uh, we might put trees and stuff down, but I need to add the wide sidewalks for the trams, so we'll just have to see how that goes. Okay, now I wasn't planning on putting the hospital there. I actually just moved it temporarily to see if it would kind of fit. And then I'm like, you know what? Kind of a nice place for it. Uh, one thing that I feel like I'm pretty happy about, I was just trying to think of a way to phrase it, is that I'm getting better at the game. <laughs> I managed to get this to be like quite straight, like a really, really straight line the whole way down. So I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, because if you notice on this side, it's a little wavy, just a little bit. It's nothing crazy. And obviously with this bridge here, I'll probably like make this a smaller type bridge and try to curve this um, retaining wall around just to be a bit more natural so that's not like done by any stretch of the imagination but you know it's it's the overall idea is that yeah you should be able to kind of get across um, I was also playing around with what can you do to get up and down from here and there are basically pedestrian crossings that let you do it it's just it can be a little finicky and a little weird because if you put a pedestrian crossing coming off of it it creates a bridge it gets rid of the retaining wall, long story short. But there are ways to keep it. It's just a bit finicky. Now, one other thing I'd forgotten to do, I thought I did it between episodes, but maybe I loaded the save since. Just want to widen that back out. And then we'll just smoothen it. So it's I did that on purpose. I want it to be a slight incline, basically. Um, but it should be totally fine. So we'll just soften that now to the edges. Little, it's like that, that's nothing. I can work with inclines like that, but it's the really big ones that can be a bit nasty. Uh, right, and then basically we grab this and just go back into the side there. I came over a bit too far. All right, I'm just smoothing that back out, whatever. We'll deal with that when we get to it. So, we'll have to give it a little bit of time. So what's the reason for so many cars? People are moving in and it can be based on the time of day, but it's mostly, I would say, the people moving in. So as people find their houses and everything and that everything starts to settle down that should ease up a little bit i'm trying to think i've got a little notepad with different things written on it for other things to do parking fees road adjustments zone adjustments okay yeah i think that's pretty much it actually uh what i wanted to do next was add in a college just out here now this is going to be somewhat temporary so we'll just add another college i'll just place it down really quickly just somewhere like here and we're going to give them the extra capacity and also the increase their graduation chance or basically reduce their dropout rate which is effectively what the library does so why do why is it temporary it's basically i mean maybe it'll stay there possibly but it'll probably have its own driveway or something in the future um the reason being while all these people are moving in i just want them to have the option to go to college and we desperately need more people in that education category which is well educated the pink category I say desperately because we've got a bunch of factories that we set up in the previous episode up at Concord's End. And we have Switch On, right? So currently there are 784 open positions. 
about 600 of which are in that well-educated category. So almost everybody that we can't recruit right now are in the well-educated workforce. So I just want people to have that option and want to keep that churn going in the background all the time. So some people are here already. Now, how's our other college doing? It's here, right? That's the university. Sorry, the college is there. 1372 out of 1500. So it still has room for more people. There's no operating districts. Everyone's just free to go to it if they want. And the same will be true for this, I guess, for now. All right, so with all that said and done, we'll just let time play. How, how's traffic? Is it easing? And how's this working? I just saw cars disappearing there a second ago. Yeah, well, actually, I did forget to do one thing here, which is if this is going to be that type of road, it needs an extra lane for people to merge onto. I didn't have the, uh, the merge isn't quite correct. It needs to be a seven lane that goes like that. That way, the inside lane stays the same the whole time. And, again, talking about weird lanes, you'll notice buses are going to be crossing over. And why? Because this is a bus lane? Because it's left only, and I can't do anything about that. So it's so frustrating. So, as a result of that, that does not need to be a bus lane. So we'll cut it off like that. Same with that one, I guess, because why not? And probably on the inside here, maybe a medium asymmetrical road here would make more sense. Now it does make things a little tight if you're in this lane, turning left or going straight, but I'm hoping most people use it to go straight when we just give it a minute. Because right now, that's not what it's being used for, but I would have hoped so, no? Still a lot of people just banking left, even though there is a slipway. Well, it could be the case that they're banking left and staying further out on their own lane to go straight ahead, which would be nice. That'd be very forward thinking of them. So maybe given a bit of time, it's starting to flush out actually. So yeah, maybe it's okay. A little strange, but it's very uh, UK town layout style actually for things to happen like that. But yeah, it looks like it's 1.30 PM. Things are kind of flushed out. People have moved in, their houses are built. So what we can actually do now is start to think about where we can place these new zoning types. So I was going to go... S oh, actually, we have to still wait. There's no demand for it. I want to wait for demand and then we can do it. All right, how's our elementary schools? 376 of 1,100. So they're filling up the high school. Again, for some reason, always seems to be low. 140, but whatever. It's better than nothing. And could we increase the library? Better chance of graduating. Absolutely, get in there. And we'll need it eventually. So just... Uh, it's a waste of money putting in an extension wing now, I guess. All right, cool. So that should help their, help their graduation chance. All right. So I think next is time for trams. So I was actually thinking, I had said previously that trams could go somewhere down here. But I thought, why not just use South Bank? South Bank is our industrial sort of area that does a lot of cargo deliveries and export exporting of goods. We have our subway yard, railway yard, and bus depot. So why not just place the trams down here? We do have empty space here, and we could roll it out along the quayside, actually. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so, in order to get started on that, we'll start with the medium road and bring it straight out from that junction, because it seems like a good place to do it. And I'll just turn some of this stuff off. So we want existing geom- no, sorry, not that. Zoning cell length, don't need guidelines, 90 degree angles, and zoning cell length there as well. And this should give us a good zone the whole way down. See? I'm getting better. It took me 10 episodes and many months, but there we go. Now, we want tram depot. Workshops and staff facilitates- Sorry, facilities? facilities for the tram network. Trams return to the depot for maintenance at regular intervals. Can be upgraded with an extra garage or garage. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tuck it in from the zoning of the street here so that we can add in things in the future. Although, that would probably go there. So, three tiles in maybe. Yeah. All right, cool. So, we'll have another one facing on the inside. And this gives us room for, like, little offices or something if we want to add them there. Kind of like what we've done here, which I'd like to do. I think that's kind of neat some admin to the area. Uh, so, they actually only operate with 10 vehicles in use, but you can add a five extra for another 25,000 upkeep. So, think of it this way. 23,000 upkeep gives us 10 vehicles. 25,000 upkeep gives us five more vehicles. But, you save on space. So, that's one of these upgrades where I actually see the benefit. It's like, okay, we're, we're doubling the upkeep of the building for just a few extra vehicles, but our footprint of space is much smaller as a result. So let's go with it. Well, I guess we'll leave it until we need it, right? But that's probably what I'll do, and I'll probably have another one here that will roll out the same way. So to do this, we need the double tram track 
that needs to be upgraded or slash replaced onto the roads like so and then down and around and we'll continue this all the way up the quayside through our Sunset Valley Commercial District looping down into Fairview all the way straight across across the hospital and then cutting back this way and then we've got our first loop done all right so we've just looped the tracks just like that now I'm gonna also bring the tracks down this way and this way now it's kind of cool when you bring the trap tracks down that way it actually fills in the roundabout with concrete because the lines might go over it which I just think is kind of a ni nice touch um, anyway so let's widen the sidewalk on these sides too now uh, a design of tram trams that I really love is in Amsterdam so we built it actually on the stream before there's a way to kind of do it in game so I'll just show what I mean really quickly before we actually start building it so we have a straight line sorry a six lane road here six lanes right with a division lane in the middle. Now, if we add tram track to the dividing line, it puts the trams down the middle and it gives us two lanes either side. And that's actually the way it is in Amsterdam. But also, in Amsterdam, they'll have grass on either side and trees on either side. And then they'll have a bike path that will be here. In from the grass. I think it's in from the grass. I'm pretty certain about that. And then in from that, there's a pedestrian path. So we don't have that in the game. There's no bike paths, pathways. But it would be basically like having another path here and another one here. So I would love to do something like that and almost build the entire city around that kind of concept and just kind of create a sort of an Amsterdam feel. Um, so I'm going to not necessarily do that with my city as uh, to that extreme, but that's what I'm being inspired by, which is that I want to have that dividing line going down this central road here. So this is a large road, right? There's six lanes. But then these ones are medium roads. There's four lanes. So on the six lane roads, we'll have the dividing line. And the medium ones, we won't. So on the medium ones, the tram lines run over the bus lanes, which is fine. On the six lane roads, they should run in the middle. So let's try to give that a go. So wide sidewalk. So no, that's not going to work. We have to do the actual division road yeah the divided road now the problem with the divided road is you can't have an asymmetrical road with a dividing line uh, it just doesn't let you but we'll just do this bring it all the way down to the roundabout and this is why i was saying i didn't want to spend too long on this because it has to has to change anyway based on how we've just done it so we still have our two lanes coming in and merging now a little bit better a little bit better than it was before should take some of the stress off although we've got barely any cars using this area anyway now that's a nice little motorcycle. He's driving on up there. They're loving it. Although he's waiting. Oh, I guess for the... Yeah, fair enough. So it is a bit of a give way situation, I suppose. How's the... How are these things doing? They're filling up. Oh, wow. 132 and 39. Okay. People are flooding on in. Um, okay. So we have demand. We have the demand for high density residential. So let's start zoning. So my plan here was to just basically... <laughs> It's going to be kind of hard to see. Actually, can we turn off the building color for a little while or something? Right, so using high density. I'm going to start with a 5x5, five five, like that. So that's just popped in immediately. So that'll be our first one. Yeah, so I'm going to clear these guys out. Sorry, guys. And uh, I haven't, like, predetermined this or anything, but there was one that I thought could be kind of an interesting. So a 5 by 3 But no, that's not what I want. So we have to just do that again. There we go. So I want the entrance on this side. And the reason for that is that's a 5 by 3 and then we could do a 3 by 5 High density as well. Don't know what these look like, by the way, so we'll just see as they come in if they look good. The next one then, so this gives us a, a bit of a strange shape here, but we could go with this four by six, which I think is one. Let me just double check that. Yeah, it is one. So this actually leaves room for a little pathway to maybe come in here and then cut down that way or something. And that would actually link up with other pathways. So let's give that a go. So four high density residential buildings. The crane just disappeared from that one, but that one looks like it's gonna be huge. So looking forward to it. All right, so let's get back to trams. 
So now we need to add in our tram stops. Now when we're adding a tram stop to the division line, it actually creates a, a widened sidewalk thing in the center. What do you call these things? Like an island, I guess, right? Um, but I think we can do that ourselves, can't we as well? Yeah, let's just do that. So that actually, you can see it separates the tram line so they're not next to each other. So I'm gonna pop that down the middle as well now. Yeah, sorry cars, <laughs> they're just like having a bit of an issue there now, but what can you do? So this keeps our tram line straight the entire way down. And it should allow these cars to just start to get back in position, fix themselves up. There we go. See lots of people using our buses. It's great. Love to see it. In fact, they're probably like majorly backed up right now. 548 passengers on the local Millfield and Hawkstown routes, which is just the local routes over there. And then the crossover routes would be the Hawkstown route, the 10. So the 10 something, the 104, 5, and 6, these are the new routes that come from Fairview. Excuse me. 90% usage, 87% usage. These guys are busy. And I have no doubt that there are just lots of passengers waiting at some of these places. Uh, not too bad, actually. No more than like 50. There we go. 216 waiting here. That's a lot. But we got buses queuing up to take them away. So, But we'll soon add the train line. They'll just bring them straight over here. So that's not going to be an issue, hopefully. All right, so I imagine things are going to continue to get backed up as we have these buildings coming in because people are just going to be moving into them. And we've just changed the roads a little bit. But now with the additional trams, let's see if we can cut down on the amount of people traveling by road. So uh, we'll just follow right out from the depot. So we come out from the depot, we come up this way. This is where things are going to get a little strange because I guess in theory, if you had trams running along here, you wouldn't need buses, right? So s so these bus routes could probably be replaced. Trams hold 240 passengers. Buses only hold 80. So I'll just put them down in the same spots for now, and then we'll probably slowly phase out the buses that aren't needed, but keep them in certain places where the trams can't get to. So that's one. Was there only one bus route on this side? Yeah, I guess so, actually. I'm actually going to immediately change that. We're going to put it somewhere here instead. And then another one here. Yeah, and something I've learned recently, which is they should be a decent distance. I'm used to putting buses right before the junctions, but you want to have actually a pretty decent distance away from them because trams will overshoot their stop a little bit uh, by design. So you just want to make sure that they're not crossing over the junction because that's what they would do otherwise. Uh, the same is true for here. Now, there's a very weird thing that happens when you put down stops on these little islands. You get, whoops, you get this situation where it'll create, as you can see, a breakpoint in the dividing line and allow trams to cross over. Now, as you can also see by the purple arrows, they are one-way routes. So I don't know why this creates this little crossover thing. Kind of frustrating, but it just is what it is, I guess, if we're gonna use this style, which I'd like to try anyway. If it's not viable, I suppose we could always try something else in the future. All right, but anyways, so we're not going to put one right there, but before this junction, I think would be good. So there's already a natural sort of break point here. Uh, and again, we want to tuck ourselves in from the edge quite a bit. And then again, the road's all the way down here. Is this one continuous unbroken? No, it's not. So we'll pop it in somewhere like there. So that's our platform for people getting on and off. So it's totally fine. Am I happy with it being there? Yeah, because then the next one's going to go up here. So we'll just tuck it straight in and bring it back. So those are actually a little bit close together, but there's high school or elementary school and high schools here, so I feel like that's fine. And then, well, I guess these are all kind of close thinking about it, but huh, I don't know. Hopefully it's fine. <laughs> I feel like it's closer than I anticipated. Is that too close every block? It does feel like, okay, I'll tell you what, outside of the bus depot and stuff, that does make sense, but maybe these two can go. And it's going to break my zoning now. But oh well, what can you do other than never make a mistake in this game, I guess? Um, yeah, I'm going to start here instead and bring it back a bit further. To there. Alright, so that, that might be a bit more reasonable. So now we have like this commercial-ish area here, also elementary school, but then we also have the high school, the bus depot. So these would be, these would be quite busy, I would imagine. Uh, the next one, I guess the hospital would also make sense. We need the dividing line to go down the middle of the road for that. All 
Alright, and widen the center. Let's just continue that all the way down. Okay, and tram stop. In you go, and in you go. Now, the next one, college. So these ones, we don't have to mess with the roads anymore because it just becomes medium roads at that point. Uh, so we'll just put one down near the college here. We don't want to block the junction, so we want to push it in a little bit further up. And on this side, a little bit further back. Cool, that's going to go straight across this bridge. Then we're over towards like the hotel area, basically. So there's a big car park there. There's a little natural block here, so maybe right here and near the bus stop again would make sense. It's kind of as far as I can get. One interesting thing is when you're putting these down, the carved out section of road reserved for buses to kind of pull in goes away because the stuff for the tram has to come out to the line, I guess, which makes sense, I guess. All right. Uh, by the hotel, little, little stop there. And next to the, the park. They're a decent distance. Curl around again. And I would say here and here. That one might be a bit close. Let's just bring that back a bit. Got condemned houses, man. Just because the zoning has redrawn itself. What a damn shame. Weirdly, the zoning is broken here. But these houses are fine. <laughs> so that's good. But this one's probably going to come in and just be a tiny little nothing. So it's such a shame the way that happens, but I just can't really do anything about it. Right, anyway, so tram line tool. So we'll start... Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't bring the stop all the way around. So that's where we ended there, and then we come down. You want a stop basically near that bus stop again, and so we're there again. All right, so starting now, one, two, this will be the outer line. So it's never going to reach that inside part of the city going to go across, get to the college, go all the way back across here, here, there, and then down to the commercial district again. And then it's just going to have to go all the way down to its depot and loop, I guess. The next one will be on the opposite end of things. So where could we start from? Here, maybe. So starting at the college, we go to the hospital, and then we just travel straight down this way, right? And we stay on the inside the entire time. So that's our two different routes. So what we can do now is go into the tram section. Yeah, so this one is the one, the first one. It's much longer. It's twice as long as the other one. Because that's to do that big weird loop. Now, in, in future, we won't have to do that. We'll link the roads in such a way that that won't happen. But for now, it kind of does have to happen. Uh, just to brighten these up, we're going to make them red. And then we can spot them easily. We'll know which one is which. Let's say, uh, just temporarily, I'll just call this long route. Uh, short route or we call this inside route. Outside route. Okay, so that's the inside Fairview route. And now you can see that they're actually starting to roll that now and because the game is the way it is, we can change the color by hovering our mouse over it. But the fresh ones that roll that now should be the right color. Game's only been out, you know, five months, guys. Go easy on them, yeah? <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there, to be honest, but anyway. <laughs> Alright, so the trams are rolling out, so there we go. Our zoning is broken and fallen away, but it'll be interesting to see now how many people actually use these central plateau things. Now, I wonder, does that mean, can we do anything on the sides for trees? Oh, you can put trees down the middle of bits that didn't have anything, and grass. Well, I suppose some trees would maybe brighten things up. They take a while to grow, don't forget, so they start off much smaller. So the ones that have platforms are the ones that don't ha can't have trees down the center, I guess. Wow, buses are busy. But yeah, we'll let that play just for a little bit and then see if our trams are kind of picking up and bringing people across. So the metro system probably won't be for the next episode or the one even after that, where we'll have parts of this part of the city will be built and this part will be built. You know, we unlocked a lot of map tiles, so we want to push this border out further. Uh, start thinking about bringing in that train station, so we might even get to doing that now. How's our, our tall buildings in? Oh, yes. Oh, they look good. 
Oh, these are like the same building, are they? But they're just rotated. Oh, no, they're not. They're actually different. They just have a similar color. But yeah, they are actually totally different shapes and everything. Great, that's what we wanted. Buildings of different heights. I'm a little annoyed that they're the exact same height, actually, pretty much. But at least they're different and orientated differently. I just didn't want carbon copy buildings popping up right on top of each other. That's cool. And we've got demand again, straight away, for more. And they're all full up. Wow, pretty much. All right, let's, uh, yeah, just bear with me a minute, and I'm going to work out some new high-rises that we can place down. All right, I've got three new ones. We have a 4x4, 4x6, and another 4x4. Or actually, maybe to break it up even further, we could do something better with that. What do we have that could go lengthways here? Yeah, so we'll put in a 6x4 there, but I'm going to look for the gap in the fence, the entrance. Not to be this side, we want it to be this side. There we go. Okay, cool. So that should create a different sized building. It might be the same height, actually, but they should be orientated a bit differently. So that could look good. If not, we'll just delete it, move it down further, and maybe make smaller ones here or something. Uh, the other thing you can do is have a 2x4, is it? Yeah, so that would fit in there. It might look strange, but we'll see what that looks like. If we don't like the look of that one, we'll get rid of it. So another high-density patch appearing. We've entered into winter. It's December, midnight, negative 3 degrees. The snow is going to be coming. Winter is coming, I guess. Uh, let's check on our college. So what are we up to now? 252. That's good to see. I'm, I'm happy to see that. And what is our unemployment situation? We're currently at 7.7%. Wow, this is a beautiful looking map overlay, isn't it? I think it looks really, really nice. The building color, young citizens to old. Hmm. And the train color. Cool. Yeah, 7.7%. It's kind of high, actually. Um, so something else I was thinking of doing, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about this really quickly, was the statistics of the city. So we're only just about to approach two years in the game. We haven't been playing for very long, so we'll change our time scale here to just one year, I guess. Oh, actually, let's just have a look, right? That's what I mean. We started mid-2023. We're just entering into 2025 soon enough. So just bring it back down to a year. If we look at our population... Total population, you know, at that a year ago was just over 5,000. Now we're approaching 30, but the steep incline has begun since our density has increased. Um, but I was looking at something else in here in between episodes, which was trade. Very unusual. Trade seems to go in peaks and valleys where you are trading and you're not. And I was trying to think like, oh, was there a time like I cut off the roots or something? But I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, and you can see every little color here is representing you know different things and you can actually toggle these on or off or whatever so like wood you would think would be a big one but it's like a fractional little tiny little line that we see there and i assume trade means import and export because it goes beneath the zero graph so maybe that's import right i have no idea but i've noticed that we just haven't seemed to it hasn't gone up in a very long time now money is fine it's actually kind of getting low but it is winter but yeah money is fine we've had our period of most income actually since trade has collapsed so maybe this was us, maybe this actually was us importing things. I have no idea, right? Long story short, I have no idea. But I've been looking around for a little while, trying to figure out, like, what's the deal with that? You know, how can we see um, what we're exporting, how much it's making us? Because if you check the production tab, we can see everything we have in surplus, but it doesn't seem like it's making much sense. If we watch our harbor, we can see ships leaving constantly, sending stuff out and bringing stuff in. But they're bringing stuff in that we have in surplus, so I'm just confused endlessly by it. So, obviously the game is a mess right now, you know, I don't mean to be so negative about the game, but it's clearly, like, just a mess in terms of its simulation, how it's relaying information to you, at least, at the very least, right? Maybe it's genius behind the scenes, but if no one understands it because there's no communication on what's happening, it's all just cause and effect, and we don't really know how to track it, it, um, yeah, it just gets a bit annoying. It's just like, I'd like to just know what we're exporting. Like, if I see a number that says we are exporting, I wish we could just see that working. Now, what's happening down here? We have a uh, lack of customers, it seems. That should be fine, though, soon, right? More people will be moving in constantly. We've got more people than ever. Why wasn't it an issue before? Is it because they've leveled up or something? So the customer thing is, if we look at this, yeah. The green is where we have a lot of customers. A lot of customers out by the highway, apparently. <laughs> I get it. It's a commercial area off on its own. But I would have thought with the connections we've just made with trams and buses and everything that you'd expect to see this place be totally fine. Well, that's a nice looking building too. Thick Digital. What do they make? 
Electronics. They sell electronics. Thick digital. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Is that called Corp? Oh no, Carp. Carpoco. They sell paper. Treasure Trove Comics and North Notes paper. Yeah, fair enough. All right, I'm sure those will go away. I, I don't worry about that. I mean, maybe one or two businesses might fall away if the particular thing they're making. It's a lot of people selling paper. There's a lot of paper companies competing, so it might just be you need to make something else, guys. Hey, look at that. That's what I like to see, a little natural stagger. Yes, that worked out very well. Wow, but ugly-ass building, though, really. It's painted nice enough, but just a giant rectangle. Looks more like a low-rent housing kind of thing, but... Nevertheless, there you go. And immediately, we've just got demand for more and more and more. So I would imagine lots of people are coming in right now, are they? Well, it is 4.40 a.m. We're about to have the morning commute. So we've just crossed 30,000. Let's start thinking about getting a train station up and running. So this is going to be somewhat temporary. High-pitched voice. I think I could put a train station here along this road for now. But ideally, what we'd actually do is have this rise up again one more time, like another tier to the leveled, you know, the way we're staggering the climb up into the distance with retaining walls. So another one of these here, not as tall, but another one would probably go somewhere here. And this is probably where the rail line will be in the future. But I'm a little over eager. I'd like to just get it in now. So here is where the train line will probably be in the future. So you can imagine the train lines here. I'll just widen up my mouse for a sec. Train lines here will probably come in something like this, go through the bit we haven't unlocked yet and come straight down. And so I imagine the train station will be like here for this part of the city. And then trams and buses and subway, that takes you in properly into the heart of the city. That's at least my plan. So there'd be like also near the train station, a university, maybe a technical university or a medical university, something a bit more specialized that takes up a bigger footprint. So that's kind of my idea for this area over here. And then we'll have it more naturally kind of come down through the under underneath the um, highway here, or we could even raise the highway and bring it down onto the rail yard area. So that's, that's the, I just want to let, lay that out and let people know that's the plan. But for now, just for a little bit of temporary ease of, congestion we're gonna just throw down that train station somewhere here so train station just along here whatever and then we can just hook that up with a double line I'll do a freeform curve right now okay so that's totally cool this one can just continue straight and then curve in all right, new train station is up and running, just like that, easy. It actually has power and everything, does it? I guess so. Good for them. So this is what I wanted to test out, which was bringing a pedestrian crossing down here. Now, like I said, it creates a bridge, but I just want to see, do people actually use it? I didn't actually, you know, test that. Um, and would it work as a connection down to this area? So this place might need its own, actually, yeah, if we bring it down here, they might just go to that tram stop, would make sense, right? So we'll just bring it all the way up. It seems to just connect straight up, so yeah, 14% incline, it's not too bad. Super ugly, I mean, it's not going to do that in the future. The idea would be that you come down here, go straight, curl, come down, and then go out, something like that, and we'll have room for buildings and stuff in here, and pedestrian roads. Something else I wanted to do out here was create some commercial. Again, subject to some redevelopment, but nothing too crazy. Uh, now, we didn't create a pedestrian crossing there, so maybe, can we do that? Or do we just have to extend the thing across? Okay. <laughs> that looks a little crazy. People have to do a bit of a, a hop and skip to get over. Hmm. That's going to create a, what about just there? Okay, so I've managed to keep the retaining wall and we have a, a crosswalk. So train station, let's maybe add on the subway interface. An extension that connects to the subway? Oh, I had no idea you could do that. Oh my God, this changes everything. That's actually great. So our subway can just go straight into there. Oh yes, that will be, yeah, I'm glad I saw that. I didn't, I just didn't see that before. But yeah, the subway in the future is just gonna go into the heart of the city, but that means we can have a nice connection point out to the train station, which in effect means that we don't need to bring a subway over here. They can just get the train from Hawkstown train station over to here. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Quite happy I found that. Did not know. Anyways, um, extra platforms, taxi stop, and services. Let's add on some services. 
and we don't need a taxi stop, I don't think. Right, so if that's locked in, now what we'll do is... What's not found here? Oh, there's different types stops, I guess. Right, going to trains, we'll get our passenger railway tool. Start here. Now we have to follow this track, which again, somewhat temporary until I figure out how we're going to rebuild it. We need to be on the outside lane. So we have to be at this platform. Did I add a waypoint? There we go. Yeah, and then just come back around, basically, to the same place. Isn't that it? Just want to make sure it hasn't gone off. Yeah, cool. If we use the inside tracks, it would actually try to go up to the right and come back down, I think. But that should be fine. So that's just a direct link from Hawkstown over to our new area, which I haven't actually given it a name yet. I was... Hmm. Damn, I had a name at the beginning, but I can't quite remember what it was. I should have written down. I, I had a name for this area as a district, but it's fine. Right, so anyways, we'll, I'll just give it a name next episode. Alright, so that'll be the train station. So how many trains are going to be running doing that? So Darling, Dorking, and then this is the... Well, right now, we'll just call it the West... Uh, the Yeah, West to East River Link. Not a great name for it at all, but it should be fine. And we'll just color it somewhat blue. It's got two trains running on it day and night. Ticket price is eight. That's fine by me. So my, my theory, my just question really is, will people use the train to get over here? And will they just walk down and get a tram? I'm just curious, you know, with that the distances involved. And there's some shops, there's reasons to be here, college and stuff. But I know there's nothing else really, like anywhere for them to live or anything like that. But I'm just curious, you know, just to see does that work. And let's uh, check up on the city. So it's 7 a.m. It's raining, one degree, so it's freezing cold, but it's not quite snowing. This, uh, this is working out totally fine as well. I'm quite happy with how that's operating. Seems reasonable for people getting out. Of our slipway that brings us in, the trees hopefully will start growing soon. Yeah, traffic actually seems pretty good. We have lots of people waiting uh, for the bus, an insane amount of people, some might say, 338th. And do we have anyone really waiting at the tram stops? A couple people, not much. I reckon what we could start to do is the Fairview line, right? The 106 Fairview. It gets pretty good usage, 50. I'm going to actually lessen the amount of buses on it. Maybe that would encourage more people to take trams. I don't know if that's how it works. Now, we want to actually track some of these trains. How long has it been? Do we have any passengers waiting? Nine? And zero. How many on this? 52 on the train. That's alright. Could be better. Now we have this color bug again. There we go. Alright, so 52 on the train coming in. And then we're going to watch where they go when they get out. I mean, they must have to use that, right? There's nowhere else to go. I think they come out down here, though, unfortunately. No, no, they don't. No, they don't. There's another exit out this way. That's good. Oh, yeah, and there's people coming up this way, too. Nice, it works. This tram seems to be doing all right. All right, so we can look at the overall thing. Passenger 72 and 16, 2% and 5% usage. That seems so rough. Really, after all that, after all my tram shenanigans, no one's using them. God damn. Yeah, let me know what you think we could do to encourage more tram usage, because I'd be curious to know. I mean, getting rid of that route altogether seems like it might be the way to go, because it's so heavily in use, but it's a good thing. I mean, why not both, right? If you could have buses rolling along the bus routes and trams rolling along the center, I guess it's fine. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be so quick to, oh, there's something wrong with it. Maybe we just need more people to really up the volume, and that would be the answer, yeah? So let's do it. Let's just keep going with more and more high-density buildings. I was kind of thinking around the park we would leave it so there's not so many high density so more maybe in the back here maybe, maybe more out this way. So let's do that. Alright so some time has been playing in the background. I've just been checking on all the little pips and icons that we have. Just doing a little bit of a sit rep but I did notice one thing. There's someone waiting for a hearse all the way out here. So there must have been a collision some sort of accident. Someone died unfortunately on our highway. This two lane highway that was built into the map actually that goes all the way to, all the, way to the north. And when I saw that, I just ended up buying all the tiles going straight across to our interchange here. Now, the benefit, I've mentioned this before, but the idea is that this is a connection to the north, and a lot of people just come straight through our town in order to go west or to go east. 
And now we've provided a solution for them to just bypass our town and just follow the highway all the way across. Now, maybe, just maybe, they'll still choose to go through if they're going east. But I hope, even if they are going east, they'll choose to take this as it should be a faster route all the way around with that less interchanges, less lights, less traffic. So that'd be the ideal. But even another side benefit is a lot of the trucks that are doing the same thing. Some of those trucks are trying to get to Pineview or the Pineview Business Park, but they won't have to do that anymore. They can't, they don't have to go through the city or through the Salford District anymore, or Salford District. They can now just go right out that way, join onto this road and get back into the, into the business parks or whatever the area they want to get to from there. So hopefully that'll just decongest some of the traffic here, but I was looking for a while. There actually isn't much, you know, it's, I gotta say, place is running pretty well. Trucks are the majority of a lot of the traffic in this area and some of the bus routes, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Nothing is like backed up or stopped and even during peak times, it's not too bad. Now, I know I just said that and you'll see cars stopping, but obviously, I mean to the to an extreme, right? Nothing's getting backed up beyond junctions blocking anyone else. That's what I mean when I say that. Of course, cars are stopping and stuff. <laughs> uh, just thought I should clarify. Um, but yeah, just thought I would have a quick look at that and have a quick mention. So also, I noticed that there's several factories up here that are being abandoned. Not sure why. They're doing wood. Or they were doing wood. They're wood storage. So we'll just get rid of that let new factories appear in their place. But you can see a couple... A couple extra ones are just popping in naturally. Like, they've been abandoned and new ones are popping up. Could just be the natural rise and fall of industries, but this one collapsed due to lack of maintenance. Now, what do you need to maintain buildings in City Skylines 2? You need... Rock, as far as I know. And what do we have? 1,098 tons in excess of rock. What about material goods for concrete? Would it be concrete, maybe, that you'd need instead? We have a surplus of that too, so not sure what the dealio is, but you know, it's just the mysteries of this game. So either way, I just thought I'd mention some of the factories are kind of popping up and popping and being destroyed and coming back themselves, but we're filling up that, that well-educated tier quite nicely. We're now at 525 out of 776, so at the beginning of this episode, there was 500 positions or something to be filled. Now there's only about 150 or so, give or take. Um, yeah, and we're running these places uh, quite efficiently. 125%. Still not enough employees, though, that middle tier. We're still uh, just waiting for more graduates all the time. Uh, down here in Fairview, ooh, we do have a little bit of traffic actually on the way in. To be expected on our only two lanes in, I suppose, road. And see, this is what I was talking about. They are getting backed up almost beyond that slip road. Almost. Not not great, to be honest. Not many people using them. 100 passengers, actually, on one of the lines. That's actually okay. But yeah, I'd like to see the trams much more full than that. We're up to nearly 32,000 people now. And our high-rises are starting to really take shape. With all of these people, parking is just going to be in more and more and more demand. Right? The parking areas are now almost completely full. Uh, especially up here, right? But you'd hope, like, hey, guys, can't we start thinking about, like, you know, public transport, maybe? We've got buses and trams that no one are using. Is there, Are they just not going to the right spots, maybe? That's cool. People are actually chilling at the little tables out here. Uh, is that high density? Oh, it actually is. It's quite a small high density building. I'm not sure I like that. All right, so hopefully... Ah, oh, you little... Imagine being that person, right? If you're one of those people, fuck you. <laughs> one of those people is like, oh, I'm in the wrong lane. Oh, I'm just going to cut across here. For me, if I'm doing something like that, I'm like, you know what? I messed up. I'm just going to have to follow this because I'm not going to block like everyone else from doing their turn. <laughs> and it seems to be a common thing. That sucks. What's the point of reserving a lane for left only if people just don't even use it? And where are everyone going? Are they just taking a left turn anyway? This is so screwed, dude. <laughs> They're just taking a left-hand turn anyway. So just take the slip road. What's the problem? Right, so I've also gotten rid of the bus route that was running in Fairview, right? The Fairview local route. So now it's mostly just trams that will be carrying people. So just, just curious, you know, do more people use the tram? Or is it the case that my trams aren't very good, so more people just use cars? Um, but there's 200 people on this one now and 85 on this one. Yeah. 
All right, there we go. I like the look at this. Yeah, they're using the bridge. They're all waiting. This is great. So much more people are going to use that train now. So that's just what I wanted to see happen. So I'm quite happy about that. So I'll play around with it a little bit more, I think. But yeah, I just wanted to show that off towards the end here, that 177 people on the train now. You know, more people are using it for sure. I <laughs> have to color these trains every time. Uh, yeah, more people are using it for sure. Things are working a little bit better now. So I think removing the bus route that takes you from one part of the town to the other if a train route's doing the same thing, just let the train do it. Seems to make more sense. We've just taken 14 buses off the streets for that. But this is my other fear, though. Maybe more people are just going to drive now, and that could be the case. If you have any ideas or suggestions for what we can do here, as mentioned, it always seems to be just one lane for a left-hand turn. Like, what can I do about that, then? They're not using the slip road. <laughs> as it, did I just design it badly? Is it because of the road we're going into? I feel like we want trams to be on this, so... I'll, I'll, I'll experiment, but I'm open to suggestions and ideas there, because that's that's a problem since the beginning of the episode, really. Yeah, very, very weird one. Very bizarre that they're like, nope, not going to use this at all. Like, what happened? They were using it before. And now they're just like, no. Traffic volume, just nobody. <laughs> Very weird. Anyway, it's going to have to be it for today's episode. Quite happy with the new skyline that we've gone for here. Very, very dense indeed. And it's only going to get more and more dense as time goes on. So I look forward to that. And as we kind of build out toward the park, maybe the building should get smaller and smaller, something like that. So we have a bit more of a natural fall off. And then on this side, we'll have a similar sort of thing. And then also some offices as well. So that's going to be the focus of the next episode. Maybe even starting the... Uh, subway network so look forward to that all right thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one